Hell Dusk Armor. I'm gonna go ahead and give that to Leazel. Raphael Diary Chapter 1, 2, and 3. A chapter from a diary penned in Raphael's Symbaritic hand. While I have, over many a sumptuous season, cast the net of my contractual predilections both far and wide, never have I been so attracted to mortals as I am to those infested by the temple. These particular fish find themselves... Oh, sorry. These particular fish find themselves flashing towards their doom, towards a steel hook emblemished by bait. How they resist the current. How inexor... <laughs> inexor... Ah! Inexorable. Inexorable? Inexorable it's well. Sure. It's tug. It's dark undertow. At the other end of the fishing pole, the elephant. How their tentacles must quiver like cooled jelly at the prospect of more catches. More and more each day along the troubled riverbank. This process has a name I sample now aloud to savor its taste. Cerebarphus. I shall make crafty use of this development. For with the hook glinting and the death so close, what could loom larger in the stricken fish's mind than the prospect of rescue? A chapter from a diary penned by Raphael Sadi. Last night I dreamt of a river. Waist deep, I waded in. Rusted hooks curled up from the water like the snaggled tooth of something ancient and diseased and submerged. The moon over the water cracked and fire flew out on the stubby wings of gormless, insanely chirping chicks. Fucking Christ. <laughs> they transformed into wriggling oblongs. Ugh, sperm. Ew. Yet by the time they hit the water, they were fished with scales of orange and gold. There came a rushing sound, the dark water ablaze as if the fish were matches and the river a snake of oil. Approaching me out of the flames came the tadpole infested. There was one among them who spoke for the rest. They gestured. Yeah, except except for when it fucks me out of the conversations and has like someone else talk. Anyway, they gestured to the melting hooks, suddenly glanced my way, and in their face I saw they had the best of me. In waking, my courage was firm. I progress my plans for the tadpoles even now. I am Raphael. I am not easily bested. The final chapter from a diary penned in Raphael's hand. Here and there, his composed hand stiffens and moves erratically, as if he were, by time, seized by emotions both powerful and unexpected. The plot thickens, goes the aphorism entirely inadequate. The plot mutates. It fluctuates. I have conceived no less than 13 variations by which I might seize the crown of Carsis. Yet in the tumult of this eternal flowing river of schemes, I, the most careful of fishermen, finds his catch elusive and difficult to wrangle. Even in cooperation, such ambiguity and ambiguity and <laughs> I don't know why I have trouble saying that word when I'm reading it. Ambiguity. I, it's like I... Uh, whatever. Uh, and delicious surprise. But the hook has snagged. The doom of Cerebarphus has abated, yet they could not predict... Could they? Could they? That in leaving behind the river, they have, in fact, welcomed the fishbowl. I am master here. A prince of bargains cloaked in cunning while scarlet satin. All that hidden under sublimely obvious truths that cannot be discounted. So the fisherman reels, the tadpoles are my catch, struggle as they might, wreathe as they wish, flop and squirm and fresh with every ounce of strength, no matter. By all the reeking flames of hell, I will not be denied. Well, about that. I mean, it took a lot of saves and a lot of absolute balls ton of luck but uh yeah what of you report for Raphael report for Raphael somehow word that the Orphic hammer is in the house of hope has gotten out and is circulating 
on the Gates information black market. I have two suspects for this. First, Gortash, who of course knows many of the House of Secrets, and second, that Diabolist for Hire, Helsic, who I think helped Gortash burgle the crown of Karsus and might have learned about the hammer from him. If I had to guess, I'd wager it was Helsic, simply because she has something that's worth money, she'll find a way to sell it. And selling away to free Orpheus could come with a high price tag. You fought well. We could use such strength in the Blood War. <sighs> now I'm free of Raphael's blasted contract. I can return to the front lines. I have my own front lines to return to in Baldur's Gate. Whoever your enemies are, they have good reason to fear you. And I'll gladly lend you my skills against them when the time comes. Until then, good luck to you, little rabbit. You're a finer hunter than any wolf. Oh boy, that was pretty fucking ridiculous. Yeah, hey, let's get the hell out of here. We got other we got other things to do, people to save. So you wormed your way into the devil's lair. Risked mind, limb, and freedom. All to steal the Orphic hammer. I hope your ambitions end there. I have already told you that the Githyanki Prince only wants to see you dead. But it seems you still do not trust me. Open the prism. I trust Gith's heir over a wretched geek. No. His domination is what keeps you free. You know this already. Still. You would test our alliance. You are falling into the same trap as the Chosen. The Chosen? The distrust of one another is their undoing. Oh, those guys. We must not make the same mistake. We must work together. Be that as it may, Orpheus deserves to be free. And what then? When he wakens from his incarceration, what do you think he will make of you? The one who bears the spawn, his very nature bends him to revile. And even if you survived him, what of the Elder Brain? Without the protection I leverage for you, you would be enthralled in an instant. You really think freeing him, his first thought would be, ah, we gotta fuck that Elder Brain up. <laughs> we need to stop the potential rise of the Elfid Empire, you think that is somehow going to be lesser of a concern? Uh, you just a manipulating piece of shit. I'll find another way to survive, one that doesn't involve abusing a githyanki. Careful. You will make a mind flayer laugh. You may think yourself ingenious for having slain a devil, but you have merely ironed out a wrinkle. The Elder Brain will not be such an easy foe. It is time we resume our journey to find it. Yep. All right. I'm so tired. As much as I want to use these, I didn't promise a hot exit inspired. Well, hello. Look who's back. Trips to the hells are usually one way, especially when the traveler causes the kind of trouble you did. I knew you were a thief. Didn't realize you were a killer. Raphael's death is already causing quite a stir across the hells. It's a rare thing for a mortal to slay a devil of his stature. In all the excitement, I hope you didn't forget our bargain. Do you have the gauntlets? I do. Hand them over, and our deal is done. I've decided to keep them. No, no, they're yours. Thank you very much. Your coin is always welcome here. And so are you, Devil Slayer. Prowess in battle is remarkable, as is your battle stance itself. Nothing's happening. Oh, shit. I'm Jack. I take me known to few outside Kalea. Shall I teach you? Interviews, I'll pass. Thank you. I prefer abjuration over acrobatics. 
to camp. <laughs> no amount of contracts will save Raphael from the fate we forced upon him. A devil well slain, if I say so myself. Uh, need you to remain in camp for a while. I question the wisdom of that decision, but so be it. Ha! <laughs> Defeating a devil in his own home feels very, very good, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep, it does. Raphael's good and gone. Feels damn good, too. Now, if only I could get rid of the other devil in my life. Join me. That's the spirit. How is your, re oh, your reunion with Vaconia? Who is overjoyed with our victory? Another den of evil vanquished and an old foe defeated. Well, Vaconia was a friend for a short time beforehand, but then a foe once more. Uh. Yes, Boo, a most wicked witch. The very mention of her name gives him nightmares to this day. Hey, why is he so scared of Vaconia? Do not be afraid, Boo. She is not here. Right, I said the word. Right, right. And you, bite your tongue until your eyes water and your hairs curl. My bad. Vakoni, 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 Vakoni. <laughs> Sorry, but why is he afraid of her? Boo and Minsk have traveled far and wide and met many fine and not so fine people. It will surprise you to learn that even the wisest of friends do not always recognize Boo for what he is. A miniature giant space hamster? Exactly! The Drowl was a cruel witch, but a clever one. She knew what Boo was right away, and she had never seen his like before. She wished to inspect his handsome magnificence, and so she did. One night, while he lay asleep, twitching his whiskers in happy dreams, she crept upon his tiny bedroll, holding a knife as slim as a toothpick. She meant to spill his miniature guts and study them. Uh, thank the gods he stopped her. Ha! Minsk did not stop her. He did not need to. Boo never sleeps deeply while evil is near. He sprang into action and almost blinded the witch. <laughs> she had fled from her camp by morning when Boo told me the whole tale over a breakfast of berries and nuts. The hammer is ours. The devil is snuffed out. Our power is undeniable. To slay a devil in his domain is to end him entire. Or it should be. Eh. I am still primed to hear some slimy final rhyme from beyond the grave. Uh, got Will, and his health is poop. We have no. Okay, you know what? Let's 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 do proper sleep. Yeah. Why am I naked? Oh, because that's hidden. All right. Why are they all naked? What in the fuckity news is going on? Is it just is it just an underwear party today? She's no, she's she's Nope. Damn Lazel. Got them cheeks out. Wrapped up though, that's what it's just, <laughs> her underwear is a bunch of <laughs> This is funny. Oh, I know why. I know. I know why. These got replaced with whatever bullshit. Or I thought it was supposed to be an illusion, but apparently not. I have performed deeds well and efficiently. Behold, as I remember to bind his weapon. Baldur's Gate's sewer system could use a few improvements. Yeah. The smell getting to you, Lazel. It isn't the smell that bothers me, it's the inefficiency. An entire underground wasted on waste that could simply be teleported to wild space. Hmm. Once the absolute's finished, I'll be sure to propose your idea to the council. <laughs> to wild space? What are we supposed just... to be doing? Is it told us to watch for troublemakers? You've come. We await your good word. Who the fuck's this guy? Kithrak Voss, 
May the astral sea be still as you cross it. And may your mind be of steel so your blade may be of silver to Lakmagir. Have you retrieved the Orphic Hammer? Will our prince's chains finally be broken? Who's the new companion? Not a new companion, but an old one and a loyal one. A proper introduction is in order, but I will let him do the honors. Uh, I have retrieved the hammer. The prince of the comet is not dead. The prince of the comet will come again. The prince of the comet will liberate us from the Lich Queen's tyranny. The prophecy is one step closer to fruition. Gith's son will soon ride against Vlakith, Voss, and I will follow him into battle. And you will wield the greatest gift Mother Gith ever granted her dauntless children. A silver sword. I will carry it for the honor of Gith, the great liberator, and her unforgotten son. Istik, now that you have the hammer, you must find a way to enter the astral prism. Once inside, smash Orpheus's bonds. His cry will shake the plains, and I will fly to your aid. The Prince of the Comet will sear the heavens again. First we'll defeat the Absolute, then we let the Lich Queen tremble. Think again. I will not permit your entry. <laughs> Ignore the Emperor. Questions, Istik? You seem to be lost in thought. Getting into the Astral Prism will be complicated. Yes, but you will meet this challenge, as you've met so many others. Yeah, ever since the Tadpole before his guard attacked, one would assume he'd do the same. The Prince of the Comet aches for Gith Yankee liberation more than he abhors Geich. He might seethe when you free him. He might gnash his teeth and slander your name. But he will see reason. I promise you. No. Istik, friend to Orpheus. Together we will end the Elder Brain which shakes this city. Then I turn my sights to Vlakith, the Queen of Deceit. When you break Prince Orpheus, oh, shit. his psionic cry will alert us. I will fly to your side. Together, we will fell the Elder Brain and thwart the grand design. Oh, he just fucked off. Oh, and I don't get to know who that guy is still. Well, Leazel. Uh... Enjoy your new fancy sword. Damn, look at that thing. Since I was old enough to hold a blade, I've dreamt of wielding a silver sword. The swords cleave both meat and mind, body and brain. To swing one, mesmerizing. To be slain by one, agonizing. That's true for which other weapon. Everyone I bleed with the sword will be my tribute to Prince Orpheus. Think of your knowledge on the Githyanki silver swords. What details did Leazel miss? 14 or higher, please. E 18 on the dot. You recall another fact about silver swords. The Githyanki forbid their use by all other peoples. Cool. <laughs> that's, that's... I'm shocked. <laughs> that, require, that required an 18 DC, huh? I could have fucking guessed that for anything Gith Yankee oriented. It's forbidden for anybody to ever use. That's not a Gith Yankee. She just told you what makes it so special. Only Gith's children may wield swords of silver. Unless a Gith Yankee grants the right in exceptional circumstance. The Illithid Grand Design nears. The true heir is shackled. These are exceptional circumstances. I grant my allies the right to my silver. <sighs> Let's go. Did you go for a swim earlier? Oh, right. Camp. Since we're not really getting to the astral plane anytime soon, and we got a bunch of other shit we gotta do, we're gonna. No. She's. No, yeah, she's over here. We're gonna toss her out. We're gonna go grab Carlac, get our party back to square one. Voss stands at the ready. All that remains is to return to the astral prism and break Orpheus free. How we get in remains to be seen. That's the problem. Yeah. 
Hey. Hey. <laughs> uh, let's set out. Let's go, go, go. Oh, right. This thing was awkward to walk on sometimes. Are you going to be hostile? Oh, they're hostile. Oh, no running away. We all are going invisible. Court of prisoners charged before the people of Baldur's Gate. Memorandum from the Honorable Lord Enver Gortash. Let no prisoner be released from neither their cell nor Worms Rock proper without my explicit consent. Presume every detainee an absolutist spy until they provide me substantial evidence to the contrary, which would be impossible for them to do while they're in prison. Baldur's Gate must be kept secure. Name, Earspoon, Charge, indecent exposure, status absolved and released with prejudice in order, uh, on order of, I'm pretty sure Earspoon was in the other place. Otto Ott, drunken and disorderly conduct, again, detained. Counselor Floric, treason, sedition, incitement of discontent. Status detained, awaiting execution, wow. Okay, so... She is being kept here, and it looks like she's that direction under. I don't want to really have to kill a flaming fist. And Astarian doesn't need hide or pass without a hide without a whatever. But when he gets here, it's well lit, and once they're well lit, your hide bonus don't mean shit. They can they can spot you without a without actually. Uh, without. Yeah, well lit is well lit. So three turns is 18 seconds. So we're going to just run past. Why do I not have Pass Without a Trace on anymore? Oh, I know I do. I just visually wasn't showing. It's over. He's too far gone. You might as well lock the cell. You're too late. It's over. By Avernus. Floric. <laughs> You're talking drivel. I'm getting you out of here. You don't get it. We lost. I came seeking allies to our cause. Watchers spotted me. Dragged me to Alder Ravenguard's husk, empty as a stair. Your father's a tadpole's puppet, Will. Nothing more. He spoke in accusations. Apostasy. Conspiracy. Sedition. I will soon be hanged on the city gallows to a chorus of cheers. You might have unlocked my cell. But there's no escape from this place. Father is safe, Floric. He is freed from the grip of the Absolute. Then... then there is hope yet. To think I'd all but given up. <laughs> no more sulking. I know what to do. Lead me from my cell. Escort me out of Worms Rock. I'll seek out my connections. When the city streets shatter, you'll want their blades. Okay. Follow me. Well done. Lead the way. Okay, so we can... Of course, she's not going to stealth, is she? Oh, they're all temporal. You know what we can do? I totally... You know what my brain... I, I forgot. We can knock them out. Let's do that. We'll save you idiots from yourself. And they spotted her? And she happened to roll max on initiative. Nice. Otto's irresistible dance. 
la 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 dance dance yeah <laughs> uh get sneak attack knocked out oh right and then you get attack again because stink attacks knocked out we better rage if they hit me at all and I AoE, I will kill the people who are knocked out. Owl bear, I believe. They're dancing. Will you not directly attack her? Counterspell, fuck. Not on my watch. Wee. Get knocked out. <laughs> Please don't do enough damage to Carlac. Oh yeah, keep hitting me. Good. We'll get Will up here. Watch and learn. Presidential tree, storage room key. So, do we have to... The question here is, do we have to get her completely out of the area? We promised to break counts of out of work rock, Worms Rock, to prevent her impending execution. Yes, okay. This is far enough. The way should be clear. I can't thank you enough for getting me out of that damned prison and for giving me courage when I'd all but run out. It's the least we could do. Your faith in this city should inspire us all. Uh, what will you do now? I will travel to the upper city. Fine. What? We still have ours. They don't have theirs. Ready for another round. No one back home will ever this. So let me get this straight. Me and Will were part of the conversation. So ours wasn't counting down. Theirs, on the other hand, was counting down the entire time. Uh, okay. This is far enough. Oh, good. They're just going to be counting down the whole time. I can't time. thank you enough. It's the least we could do. You're f I will travel to the upper city. Find what allies I can. You won't fight the coming battle alone. As long as the city stands, I will stand with it. This is my promise. Okay. Well, you fucked them out of their invisibility. That's great. But we can uh, rest. After reading the legends of Answer, we discovered the great worm Answer resides in a secret lair called the Wormway. The entrance is apparently located somewhere within Worms Rock Prison, and the notes inside it hint that opening the way involves lighting, lightning sparks and torches. Lightning sparks? Lightning sparks. Ow, no. Oh, 
Oh, are you... <sighs> Why... Why is it like this? <laughs> Making me sweat. Okay, everybody get the fuck in before that door decides to close on us. That's curious. Oh, look, another way in. <laughs> Too bad I could only, I mean, well, I, I was going to say I could only do that with, with one person, but I could actually do it with multiple people if I use the uh, gaseous form. But that's literally my sixth level spell. Or wind walk is my sixth level spell. Oh, wow. Is that Baldurin with a bronze dragon? Must have been quite an adventure. Baldurin and his winged ally admiring the fruits of their labor, the city itself. Baldrin sails away and leaves the dragon to watch over his city. Do the histories make mention of this? I don't know. Journal of Past Adventurers N1. The worm's lair, incredible. The legends were true, and we've marked our place among them. We'll prove our worth with unrusted swords and meet the dragon. The good dragon, or so we pray. Gods bless our endeavor. The statue before you bears a familiar likeness. It is Balduran, the celebrated adventurer who founded the city of Baldur's Gate. Peril floods my province. The palisades fall, the earth does tremble. The servants of shadow and blood assemble. Beyond lies the Grand Worm, deep in slumber, awaiting a true hero's advent, should my domain drown in torment. Be you the deluge, turn away. Be you the hero, answer true. Are you worthy? Poetic nonsense. There is no worm and no savior. Oh, shut up, Illithid. I am, I am worthy, open the way. Arcana check. What is this going to be? <sighs> oh, roll 10, please. There you go. You sense neither life nor spirit within the statue. A powerful variant of magic mouth has been cast on it, allowing it to speak only recorded messages. Asking it questions seems pointless, but I'll try. The statue gives no response. Yeah. yeah. Sure, I am worthy. Ancient Ansor, hear me. A champion is proclaimed. The test begins. Let your judgment follow. I mean, at this point, if we're not worthy, and no one's going to be. walking the streets, and I never knew this was under them. What other wonders have I missed? Shrouded. Okay. Courage, insight. Face my test, prove your worth. Oh, look, there's a... Okay, so we have... Is this four separate tests? Paintings hung on the wall. Almost like an art gallery. This is the... Statue of Baldurin. A true champion knows justice and eliminates those who stand in its way. Restore the balance of justice. Justice. No pardon without repentance, and no penalty without mercy. The right path often lies between the extremes. Mercy, please. Justice should be a harsh lesson. 
All the better to deter the next vagabond. <laughs> Is that a general aphorism of yours, or are you just trying to be, are you trying to be helpful? Thanks for the wise words, Will. Keep in mind. Wise indeed. Though I can't take credit. It was my father who taught me the ways of the just. The apple. The apple. The painting depicts a red-haired man stealing a shiny apple from a cart in an open-air market. You know this market, the wide, where Baldur's Gate citizens and visitors gather to conduct trade and wax political. Okay. The child. A red-haired man is portrayed with his cloak's hood lowered, giving an apple to a smiling urchin. Several other children are huddled behind the one receiving the apple, hands outstretched. He stole an apple for... a bunch of orphans, probably. The induction. A red-haired man is depicted in hushed conversation with a dark-haired woman. She wears a cloak with an unusual symbol on it. Tally marks totaling the number nine. The theft. A red-haired man is depicted in the Hall of Wonders, thieving what looks to be a priceless artifact. It's an astrolabe of entrapment. It could hold a dozen gin within it, perhaps even more. The chase. A red-haired man is depicted running through the city streets, a flaming fist officer chasing just behind. <laughs> a cloaked woman, hair dark as a raven, looks on from a safe distance. The judgment. A stern judge, his pockets full of coin, orders a red-haired man to the gallows. A shiny apple rests on the ground nearby. The judge. The judge is obscured. The judge is obscuring paintings within 20 feet, preventing judgment being passed on an ascendant, on an accused soul. What the fuck does that mean? Oh, these are all these paintings are. The shadows are blocking me. I need to get rid of them somehow. Cleanse the world of those who would stand in the way of the righteous. But do not let such cleansing prevent justice. I hadn't expected puzzles. Is the Great Worm really hidden behind tests of this kind? I would expected feats of strength, yes, but nothing like this. Like it was designed for sport. I mean, anyone, any, anyone strong enough can do a feat of strength, right? This is supposed to be testing your moral fiber, I'm assuming, more than your capacity to push a boulder. Away! Behold, the paintings tell the tale. My judgment is rendered. The thief earns his due. Uh-huh. No, the judge has spoken. The crime must be punished. Is there anything else I can interact with? Can I just remove the curse? Probably not. But... Oh! Fuck me! Alright, what now? Oh. They get fucked, Judge. The Hanging. The Hanging. A red-haired man is depicted hanging from a gallows as a crowd looks on. You notice a child in the crowd, a falling tear leaving a trail on his cheek. Freedom. A red-haired man walks the streets of Baldur's Gate, clad in a billowing cloak. You catch what? a glimpse of a sly smile beneath his hood, and a golden coin in his hand. A thief walks free. Is this truly justice? The cell. A stern prison guard slides a warm meal into the thief's cell. The red-haired man has a ten-day left to serve, 
judging by the scratchings on the wall behind him. Oh. We are supposed to move this to here. Uh, Kierlek? No, uh, no. Oh, okay. Judge and applied let talionis. The principle of the sentence being proportional to the crime. You are a paragon of justice. Proceed. Can't talk to these statues. Let's walk on the thankfully water visible magic path. Oh, Christ. Okay. There's a statue. A good leader has the insight to find good counsel. As a war reaches its end, there is one who doesn't advise for the city's prosperity. Find him and strike him down. Okie dokie. Pile of books? Oh, apparently there's nothing in that pile of books. It's a lie. Stead's virtue of you. We supposed to like zap this thing or something? That may have been a mistake. Where's... Where, where, I don't want to... <laughs> now that I think about it, that may have been me striking something down. I'm assuming I'm supposed to strike down the statue. And I need to think I need to find a way to read the books. However, I'm supposed to do that. No cause for alarm. People of the Sword Coast there is no cause for alarm. Okay, I remember reading that book. Five Year War. Ah. Five Year War by Thorn Bass. The war was, in truth, nothing short of a tragedy. It began as a mild altercation between the sanguine sons of Elio and Vida, families regarding. Oh, and, and Vida families regarding, if you can believe it, the proper ownership of a sheep farm. Over the course of three seasons, a full blown conflict had erupted between Baldur's Gate and Victon. A pointless war, leaving both cities with nothing but a thousand youthful corpses to show for it. Well, that sucks balls. Ah, hold still, will you? Ah, hold still, will you? Why is it a slide of hand check? Keep a blade close. Gotcha. Do I have the book in my inventory? I do. The Virtues of Unions, an Alwyn Stead. It is quite obvious that larger kingdoms offer benefits to all people within. As a kingdom grows, so does its fields, its populace, and its economy. A few charred corpses is a worthy sacrifice if a dragon offers a share of its hoard after all. Uh, no? So too should you seek union, however imperfect should a powerful kingdom march its army on your borders. Some fiction, some friction is inevitable, of course. Citizens' rights might erode, for instance, but such lesser issues will be sanded down by the march of time, such as the price of peace. Right. Okay. That motherfucker literally said, hey, if you get riches from a dragon, who cares if a bunch of people die? <laughs> hey, get back here. Ooh, got it. Suto's Ethics of War. The Ethics of War by Christina Solto, or whatever. My colleague Amap, Amops, Amaps, whatever, 
proposes fair rule of engagement in times of war and forgiveness upon victory. Are we to spare our enemies then, once they have fallen to our might? Are we to pull all hatred behind us once? I've read this before. S uh, surrender is offered. Indeed not. For what shall we do once our opponent gathers new armies and masses them? This is the one where they're like, if you win a war, you should murder and kill every last one of them. That's some fucked up shit. Thomas, Can I only grab one book per person? Well, it's a good thing she made her sleight of hand check. Wow. Fucking rolled a 19 on that shit. Received a map's memoir. My life has been a long succession of pleasures. To see my town take to my ideas and cease legal discrimination of local orcs. To see my fights against horrid living conditions in city factories take off. To have the chance to see a new generation take to these ideas of a better, kinder, fairer, intelligent world. And run with it to new reaches of the continent. It was not a life without struggle, however and I shall regret its failures. My old friend Suluto comes to mind, who adopted such cruel ideologies later in life. I will forever console myself in the idea that such a brilliant mind would only conceive such theories under the strain of exile and the promise of reinstatement, as she ultimately was. The solution's plain as the high moors in midsummer. Let's chat. Yeah, it's Luto. She's crazy. This place is astonishing. A bard's legend made real. You had an idea about the inside trial? Yes. Suelto's ethic of war would lead to endless conflict. No city could survive it. Suelto is the one you should strike. Yeah, that is literally what I just said. All right, you crazy. Get zapped. An insightful decision. The tree of peace for lasting fruit. Proceed. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get along with your neighbors where if you ever go to war, you just decide to murder literally everybody. <laughs> kind of reduces the concept of allies down to almost nothing. 